Hi everyone, I'm Joseph, and you're watching or listening to the Box of Inspiration show. I'm glad to introduce today's guest, my friend, Cloris Kylie. Cloris is a coach and an online trainer specialized in lead generation. She is helping authors, speakers, coaches, and trainers to expand their reach and client base and make a great living doing what they love. Her motto is reveal your magnificence. Cloris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joseph. It's a ple pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm excited to have you here. And in today's interview, we will focus on joint venture collaborations and talk a little bit about your, the experience that you had with JVs. Um, key parts to focus on when doing JV collaborations and also a few mistakes to avoid. But before we do that, why don't you give us a little bit more about yourself and tell us what you do? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, as you said, I, I work with entrepreneurs and I help them build what I call a magnificent business. So that's a business that really creates an impact because, you know, we're here because we're passionate about our ideas. So you want to create an impact, but at the same time, you want to have the lifestyle that you've always wanted. So it's a combination of those two. And then I'll show you strategies, marketing strategies to connect with the right people. So it's not about connecting with anyone. It's about connecting with those people who appreciate your value and who are willing to afford or to pay for your services, who can apply what you teach them. So that's who you want to attract. And yeah, that, that's what I do. So um, I've, I've worked with several JV partners as I grow my business. And I can tell you, if, if I can choose one method to grow your business, that's the one I would choose first. That, that's perfect. And that's also what we will focus on. But I love that you mentioned that you need to choose who you want to work with. Don't, don't just work with anybody because eventually it won't lead to anything. And it's the same when you are creating something. You don't want to target everybody but because that, that won't lead to anything. So uh, target uh, who uh, niche down on when you're targeting someone but also when you're trying to work with someone uh, to find out uh, what, what, where you can do the best damage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And what you said is so important, actually, since we're focusing on the JV partner stuff, is that when you have a defined a niche audience and products that are really specific for that audience, that's when you can really find partners. But let's say that you just offer something that is really general, you know, how to have better health, or, you know, how to, uh, you know, grow your business in general. And then you're trying to find partners is difficult because then there's a lot of overlap. So you're looking for complementary products and programs. That's what you're looking for. Exactly. So let's start with finding JV partners uh, and reaching out to potential, uh, potential JV partners. So how do you go on with finding JV partners? What I would say, I've, um, actually, most of my JV partners have come from just me reaching out to people. I, uh, I'm active on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I saw somebody who might be a good partner, I would connect with them. And I actually have a, a podcast in a LinkedIn group. So I would invite the, the people who were, you know, people who were good partners for me or at least good connections. I would invite them to be on my podcast and then uh, everybody else would I'd invite them to go to the group. And what happens with that is that you start creating a relationship. And then from that relationship, you can approach them and ask them to collaborate. And um, I would say, no, uh, notice that I said a relationship because many people think, oh, I'm just going to find somebody and ask them, would you be interested in promoting my stuff? And uh, what happens is, though, when you have your product and you're in love with it, you feel that the partners would be, you should be lucky to promote it, right? Because you feel, oh, they're, they're giving value to their audience. They're making money out of my program. Why not? I'm just going to go and offer it to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they don't know you, then it, it won't be incentive enough for them to say, oh, it looks like you can make some money out of this program. No, it's about creating a relationship and they're really helping you as they promote your programs or your product or your, just your name to their audience. So just keep that in mind. And then um, I would say the second source of um, JV partners are um, uh, 
a program I joined is called Joint Venture Insider Circle. And it was great because, you know, I, I was able to network with a lot of people who were looking for the same thing for partners. Mm. Uh, so I made, um, I guess, the whole process much easier. Um, but I would say, um, you know, if you can meet with people, you know, seek them, find people who have something in common with you. If you meet someone in person, don't dismiss them. You know, always think, how can I collaborate with this person? And then, you know, take it from there. That, that's perfect. And to, with the podcast that you mentioned, the first uh, point is that you're eventually giving value. You're, you're doing something for them. Right. Uh, and the, the second point from uh, connecting through a, a Facebook group or, or a course or a group whatsoever. And that's how we, you and I connected through the group you just mentioned. So uh, groups are a great opportunity to meet like-minded people connect, build a relationship, and then see how you can help each other out. And hopefully you can promote each other as well. Yeah, exactly, Joseph. It's what you said is important. It's about, it's a two-way street. You have to provide value as much as you can. And then in return, that person will be compelled to reciprocate. And then, you know, you might be thinking if, if you're listening and you are beginning in your business and you don't have a huge following or you, know, you might be thinking, how can I provide value to this person if they have a bigger audience or more experience? And there's always something you can provide, whether it is in an introduction, it could be a, a review of their book or their podcast. Um, it could be your expertise. I mean, you could say, hey, you know, I checked your website. This is what I noticed you could do better or these are mistakes I found on your website. People appreciate that. So anything that you can do to kind of help that person, then definitely go ahead and do it. That's so true. And now that we know that you're working hard to, to build a strong relationship, to build a good relationship uh, with both your partners and your audience. Uh, and I know that you have committed to only take around eight uh, sponsors or collaborations each year, which to me sounds really good, but uh, many others and even experts out there, they say that 12 is a minimum per year. Um, so tell us the reason why eight uh, and why not 12 or more. Yeah. Well, I would say the number one reason, Joseph, is that I want to be able to really support the partners I work with uh, full on. I don't want to just say, okay, I'll support you, which I actually did. You know, I've, every mistake you can imagine in this business, I have made. So <laughs> I, would say, I would say, like, yes, I'll promote you. And then I would look at my calendar and it's like, oh, my God, I can't, you know, I have all this stuff coming up, my own promotions and my blog posts. So I would, just to be nice, I would send one email. And of course, you know, the result of that was pretty dismal. Um, and uh, it damaged my relationship with that person because they're thinking, oh, is she really promoting me? Not really, right? Um, so if you really want to support people and create a strong relationship, you want to make sure that you can really support them, you know, throughout the whole process. So that's the primary reason I did this. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, uh, I didn't want to do 12 and say, okay, once one a month, because I do have my own promotions of my own products and programs. So I don't want to inundate my list with, you know, some promotional all the time. Um, I want to have time for my own promotions and then, um, you know, the JV partners as well. Exactly. And another thing is that, sure, you will get some results by promoting stuff uh, all the time every month. Uh, but you will get so much better results that if you have, let's say, eight promotions per year from other partners and doing them right, doing them 100%, uh, going through, as you said, the whole process. And then also you have your own product that you want to promote to your audience as well. Yeah, that's right. And then let's say that you wanted to create a relationship with somebody who, uh, you know, you cannot really promote because of your calendar. Maybe you can find other ways to support them and keep that relationship going for the future. So you could offer to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, exchange guest posts. If you have podcasts to appear on each other's shows, you know, there's always something you can do. And who knows, maybe in the future, you'll be, you'll be able to fit in that person. But you know, don't dismiss somebody either because you say, oh, I have, you know, only eight. It's okay to work with more people, but at a different level and uh, be very clear on what they can expect from you though. Because it's easy to say, um, yes, I support you. And then they understand one thing, but the reality is different and, and vice versa. I've had partners who said, yes, I'm there, I promote you. And then I contacted them throughout my launch 
and they were gone. They disappeared. They didn't even reply to my emails. So, of course, my perception of that person, you know, it's not that good anymore. I don't really want to do business with them. So, you know, it goes both ways. Of course. Uh, there are so many reasons to, uh, uh, not only reasons, but ways to collaborate. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, to be honest, from the very first uh, connection and conversation conversation that you have and tell them up front what you can do and can't do based on your audience, your calendar and all that stuff. And besides having too many partners uh, or promoting way too much, what other mistakes do you see entrepreneurs make when it comes to joint ventures? Well, I would say a big mistake is, well, number one, not having a, a, a targeted audience that uh, it allows you to create um, very specific products and programs. Because again, when you go out to try to partner with people, that would be like, well, you know, you know, your program is nice, but two of the modules overlap with mine, so I cannot work with you. So you'll have trouble getting people who actually can partner with you. And I would say related to that is to have a product or program that you don't really know if it's, it's going to work. You know, because what happens is if you have a new program, you're excited about it, uh, but what if you have created that program without like a lot of input from your ideal audience and the product, you know, flops. So then, you know, you have a partner who's kind of dissatisfied that nobody wanted to buy the program, you know, so I would say the more you can work on your foundation, which means uh, the audience you want to serve products that are really specific for, to do one thing for that audience and, uh, you know, just have all of your systems and technology ready before you contact somebody, then you'll have a, a really good chance of success. But it's when you're trying to like rush things and, you know, go for the partners first and then the products, that's when things go wrong. That, that's, that's perfect. Uh, uh, definitely focus on quality more than quantity when it comes to not only JV, how many JV partners you have and which one you decide to collaborate with, but also mm -hmm. the whole process, the pages, the, promotion material and all that stuff as well and of course as you said you can test your offer before uh before you try jv partners so you know how it converts and how you can improve that so uh is there something unique in a good way a good experience that you had happened to you during a jv collaboration well i would say i learned joseph that sometimes you feel like somebody would not be a good jv partner for some reason but then you'll be surprised. Um, you know, there's this one woman I met. She, um, she's the editor of a health and wellness magazine. And, uh, you know, I really related to her really strong ethics and it's really nice lady of uh, actually from here, from Connecticut. And, um, I, um, I was just talking to her about how, like to help each other. We, I wasn't thinking about, can she promote me at all? And then the more she talked about her business, I realized that she had this list of thousands of practitioners who advertise on her magazine or in her magazine. So mm. she has, you know, yoga instructors, chiropractors, you know, all kinds of service providers. And that's when like the light bulb went on and like, oh my gosh, you know, I serve that audience. I help them market their products and services. Maybe we can do something with that. And she said, yes, because I've been help, trying to help these people do marketing and, and somehow, you know, the, it doesn't work. They don't understand it. So that's when we found that there was an opportunity for us to actually become JV partners and help each other. So I would say, you know, always try to find those opportunities and never dismiss somebody at like at first glance because there might be a way that you can partner up and do great things together. That's a perfect warm up before the last round. But before we hit the last round, uh, why don't you share the best way people can find you online to connect more with you? Oh, sure. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, they can go to cloriskiley.com. That's C L O R I S K Y L I E.com. I have a lot of free resources there. I have a a client attraction style quiz, which is a lot of fun. It gives you a lot of insights of, you know, what you currently do to attract the right clients and how to, how to make that style succeed to attract the right people and some other downloads. So definitely go there and connect with me. I'd, I'd love to, to hear from you. Okay. So it's time for my favorite part, the unexpected three, which, uh, where I will ask you three random questions. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. 
Number one, what is one of your favorite resources or online tools right now that you are using? I love ClickFunnels. That's what I use to create all my landing pages, sales pages, order forms, pretty much every page to collect uh, you know, leads and, and make sales. So I really like it. I would say easy to use, all in one. So love that, yeah. It's a great tool. I've used that as well. And it's, as you said, all in one. That's so, right. So number two, three things to have in place before reaching out to potential JV partners. What would those be? I would say number one, you need a product for sure. <laughs> a product that actually is, is proven that you have created for your target audience. You need to find or to have the, the pages in place, the technology to, con, uh, to collect leads, so a landing page, and of course to have the sales, order forms, so you have to have the technology there. I would say uh, also the technology expands to a way to track the sales by your JV partners, because you need to have a way that they trust you, they know that whatever sales they send to you are going to be tracked and you will receive their commission. So I would say that, those are, if I were to say three things, product, uh, landing page and sales page and, and tracking tool to keep track of, of the sales for your partners. So product, pages, and the affiliate stuff so everything can be tracked uh, automatically. That's N right. Number three, take us back to the day when you decided to, to go your own way. With the experience and the knowledge that you have today, what one advice would you give yourself? Well, I would say um, get help early <laughs> as i told you before i you know every mistake in the book i've made and uh you know back in the day i thought i knew it all so like, oh, i got this i don't need any of those coaches and trainers and nobody you know i'm just gonna figure things out on my own and of course after a lot of money wasted and time and a lot of pain i realized oh I, it looks like i do need to <laughs> educate myself and you know seek the advice of somebody who has been there already so if I have one, one uh, advice uh, for myself and for everybody, it's just you really seek expert help so you don't make those mistakes because then you can go into this, like, that mental state that you don't believe in your abilities anymore, and that's what you don't want for sure. Find a coach, a mentor, or someone who can help you along the way, especially when you are starting out. That's it for today. You will find all the links below this interview. Cloris, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Joseph. And thank you all for tuning in.